um, Roisin and this is the perfect start to a mermaid themed reading vlog. I have been completely soaked. Um, I just cycled 18 kilometres in the pissing rain in the English summertime. Last year's summer was so sunny. It is really hot outside, really hot. This year the weather hasn't been quite the same. Because of our summer last year, I decided to do a sad girl summer reading vlog where I read sad girl books and planning this year, I thought we'd have similar weather and so I would do a similar thing and make a very summery reading vlog, thinking that I would be reading mermaid books while the sun was shining and it was so hot. The weather, however, hasn't cooperated this year. The mermaid books that I am planning to read are... Mrs. Caliban, not technically a mermaid book, but you know, there is sex with a humanoid aquatic creature in this one, so I think it counts. Then we have another merman book, Pisces, The Pisces by Melissa Broder, which I have heard is basically the same thing uh, as Mrs. Caliban, but a little extended. We've got the mini and the longer one. I am very, I've never read a Melissa Broder, and I am unsure about Melissa Broder going in. I know loads of people love her, but I also know the fat phobia is intense. Um, and so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Then the only mermaid book that I owned before I decided to do this, The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Rothy. Um, this one is a mermaid and is set in the Caribbean. Um, and then finally, The Seas by Samantha Hunt, the one I am the most excited about um, because I think I've just heard so many people reading this this year, even though it came out in like 2004 or something. It's an older one than I expected. I think in terms of age, we've got this one, then this one, then this one, and actually this one's the newest. Um, I'm going to read these four mermaid books. Um, we'll see how horny they are, how mermaidy they are, um, and hopefully this video will be a lot of fun. The Seas follows a young girl who lives by the coast and believes she is a mermaid because of something her dad once said. Her dad walked into the sea years before and has not been seen since. Our main character lives in a strange little house with her mother and her grandfather who is a typesetter and is obsessed with a different man, one who is a soldier returned from the Gulf War and who is in his 30s when she is 19. We explore her mental health and whether or not she may be a mermaid after all. Hello, so I'm about to leave for work, as you can probably tell, um, but I am also 80 pages into The Seas by um, Samantha Hunt, and I probably want to read more of this um, on my lunch break and on the way home, so um, I think I should talk about it now because I'm roughly halfway through, slightly less than halfway through. Um, so I'm, re I'm really enjoying it. I think it is wonderful. Um, it is... This small town setting is really well evoked and it has this feeling of kind of a slight, like light fantasy, but very much rooted in mental health rather than an actual fantasy. Like she believes she is a mermaid because of something her dad said. Um, and there is, there is a feeling of that fairy tale whimsy, um, but in a very like darkly melancholic way. Not super dark, but there is melancholy and a kind of feeling of being constantly under a cloud. Whimsical, almost um, poetic writing. She didn't know what the hell that meant, but it made her damp inside like a flood. So the bottle broke and she didn't care anymore as long as she could have him. All the good silent things she'd been saving up, like lights off in the distance at night or fog in the morning, ricocheted around her insides, freed, and she never felt so good. It was, it's just really, really lovely writing. Um, and it reminds me a little bit of The Discomfort of Evening, although less detached than that. But there is that sort of sense of the bizarre and strange um, hanging at the corners of our main character's mind. A, a feeling of disconnection and not being sure where she fits in the world. Um, but the writing in this is a lot more poetic and a lot more in musical almost. Um, there is a rhythm of the sea that is throughout this book. It reminds me also of a less plotty version of this book. This book, I'll put it here when I remember it. Um, but there, there is the similar feeling of the, the sea, the small town, the, the melancholy. I think it is possibly going to end up being one of my favourite books of the year. It's the perfect balance for me. Beautiful writing, but with... So it's balancing that with, with a, a atmosphere. I think atmosphere is it's really important to me when I'm reading. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing it. And I'll let you know when I have what I thought. Hello. I've finished this book and I loved it um, but this weekend it is my boyfriend's mum's boyfriend's uh, birthday so I'm gonna make him some pickled beetroot because he loves everything pickled um, so I'm gonna do that while I talk to you about the book.
I've talked a lot about weather in this vlog, but for this book it feels fitting. I thought it would be hot and sticky and it would be perfect for reading horny mermaid books about the sea and fish people, but instead we've had the wettest July on record and August looks like it will be much the same. But the grey and windy and the sudden soaking downpours feel much more suited for this book set in the north uh, of the United States, though it's never specified where. It is a dark and intimate book a book about mental health and about dreams, about waiting and loss and silence. And it is definitely set in a windy, cold, dark place, a place that is turbulent, um, as is our main character's uh, internal life. The writing is just so beautiful and poetic, I felt entirely absorbed in it. Like, the town is built on a steep and rocky coast so that the weathered houses are stacked like shingles, or the rows of razor wire on a prison, one on top of the other up the hill. It was luscious and melancholy and oh so moving. I absolutely loved the way the story went. I thought that the uh, strangeness of it, the lack of conclusion or um, lack of firm ground worked just so well, and I think it might be one of my favourite books of the year. Mrs. Caliban follows Dorothy, who is a grieving housewife in the Californian suburbs. Her husband is unfaithful, but they are too unhappy to get a divorce. One day, while doing chores, she hears a strange voice on the radio announcing that a green-skinned sea monster has escaped. But little does she expect him to arrive in her kitchen. It is hissing now. So much for a hot hot girl summer. Um, I've finished uh, Mrs. Caliban, I've read all of it. It's only 117 pages long so I didn't think there was much point updating you in the middle because it's all just this one story. I don't think I quite got it. <laughs> like, and it's a story of this woman who is housewife. Marriage is unhappy and there is a lot of sex and sexuality. It's a very horny book although not a smutty book in any way but it is a lot about desire and about the nature of desire and being understood as a person um, as opposed to as a theory of a person I guess. Violence as well, there's a lot of violence in this book um, and what it makes, what makes a human um, and kind of about othering of people and things like that as well um, and loss there is a lot about loss in it as well our main character was a mother but she lost her child and then she also had a miscarriage um, and her loss kind of permeates throughout the book it was just a bit strange um, and not in a way that I enjoy it being strange because it was just so matter of fact with the strangeness like she just meets this frog man and that evening they're like let's have sex everywhere in this house um, and I'm like you didn't get past the, the frog man part of it it, it was about this woman like discovering her own desire. Her friend told her that she didn't really understand desire. It was about her like coming into her own and discovering her desire through this frog man. Um, but there were questions about like morality and about um, the difference when you know someone in terms of when something is immoral or not, how your understanding of that is dependent on or who you know in said situation. But yeah, I never, everyone just felt like, like Stepford Wives, like not, that's not quite right, but they felt like robots, like they felt like they were performing um, in 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 a strange way, like they've been pro programmed to react to everything in the weirdest way possible. It was very readable, very easy to read. I just don't think I quite got it. I feel like maybe this one went over my head a little bit. I have a migraine, so that also probably doesn't help. Oh yeah, there's also the hint that the frogman might not really exist. Um, our main character is acting like slightly unhinged before he turns up um like hearing things so who knows but i don't really think that was explored very much so. the pisces follows lucy after she moves to los angeles to dog sit for her sister after an impressive breakup with her boyfriend her mental health is rock bottom and so she goes to group therapy and on numerous tinder dates to try and find some relief from the anxiety everything changes when she becomes entranced by an eerily attractive swimmer while sitting alone on the beach rocks one night. Hello, so I am um, 110 pages into the Pisces, nearly halfway, I think. Um, and yeah, it's, it's perfectly readable. The, um, the writing is compelling uh, in a way. 
Um, yes, the fat phobia, which I mentioned at the start, definitely exists. She breaks up with her boyfriend, um, and seemingly her motivation at the time is how disgusting, how physically repulsive she finds his um, middle-aged man weight gain. Saying that, she is hideously rude and judgmental about the way absolutely everyone looks, and incredibly fixated on that, but that is part of her as a character. They're all narcissistic and shallow, and also, like, painfully aware of their own issues but with no intention of changing um or an attempt to change that feels rather insincere it's just very shallow and very um uninteresting in some ways like a lot of the things she's talking about the issues that she's struggling with you i can see them how they could be relatable for people um you know that like desire to change and to better oneself but a lot of it coming from external validation of what it would mean to be better rather than an intrinsic desire to change because it's hurting oneself like she doesn't seem to have that intrinsic desire everything is about appearances and the surface and the way other people see her and she says she feels this sort of emptiness inside so i suppose it's supposed to reflect that like the reason she's so focused on the surfaces is because she's afraid to be vulnerable and afraid to turn inwards um but it's just so on the nose <laughs> all the time like all of the descriptions and stuff let me go a few pages back i can't find the bit i mean but she's just very on the nose very much explaining everything that she means out to us and i suppose it's slightly less irritating because it's coming from a first person narrator rather than a um, narrative voice telling us that this is how she's feeling um but it is something that i've mentioned before that like this much on the nose this kind of bothers me because she's so self-aware and yet not self-aware at the same time which I guess is true of a lot of people um it's not that it's not it doesn't feel real or realistic and I get that it's not supposed to be a likable character but it's also not an interesting character um and I think that that's kind of a failing of a book if the character is not only um unlikable but also intensely boring I think I was expecting more I was expecting more literariness and what I'm getting is glamour magazine i don't know i'll keep going but maybe when things get a bit weirder and the merman shows up um it will be more interesting but for the moment it just feels like basic it's really basic this really reads like melissa broder has never met a british person it's settled melissa broder has never met a british person now i'm going out to hitchin um to go like into the vintage shops and to do some book shopping as well so take you along with me i think perhaps i read the pisces too late and maybe it would have been more interesting when I hadn't read one too many Women and the Void books. This book references the void a lot. There was a lightness to the start of it that was working for me, but then it kind of went off the rails. I should say that it was a very accomplished, by which I mean worked well on a sentence level, and there was nothing structurally wrong with it. I think it did what it set out to do, and what it set out to do made me roll my eyes into the back of my head. For a lot of it, I couldn't quite tell what was going on. Not literally in terms of the plot, but in terms of the perspective. There was a sex scene in which she's talking about him being inside her and her internal monologue is going on about it feeling like she's also inside him with her existential penis. And I was trying to work out if it was a joke. Like, a lot of it is about mental health. And I was trying to tell if the tone was fleabag, walking that line of intensely vulnerable and completely unserious. That never let them know your next move kind of self-preservation that makes you feel uncomfortable by keeping you all at sea unable to grasp the slipperiness of it. But as the story went on, I became more and more convinced that it was in earnest. Our narrator's inner monologue stating Instagram carousel post pop psychology as if it's a deep revelation, and the incessant rhetorical questions. I nearly lost my mind. What had been fun and irreverent and awful in a can't-look-away way became how much more self-indulgence is there? It all dissolved to be, I think, too American for me, or perhaps, I mean, too Californian or even too L.A. I've mentioned before that I can struggle with these privileged woman has masturbatory meltdown stories because I can just hear my Northern Irish mother telling them to rise up. I suppose I just don't have time for a book so self-aggrandizing when it's about a woman who fucks a fish. The Mermaid of Black Conch follows Fisherman David and the sea dweller Aikaya, an innocent young woman cursed by jealous wives to live as a mermaid. When American tourists capture Aikaya, David rescues her and vows to win her trust. Slowly, painfully, she transforms into a woman again. Yet as their love grows, they discover they cannot escape the curse forever. Um, so <laughs> I've been seeing these sock curls everywhere on uh, Pinterest, TikTok, uh, all the places. 
yeah so I decided to give them a go um, I enjoy a heatless curl method um, but I'm not sure this is my first time trying them so I'm not sure how well they are going to work I'm also halfway through the mermaid of black conch so I thought I would talk to you that you through it whilst I see how this has worked um, the one thing is though this one in the back here um, I'm not sure that's gonna have worked at all because I took it out in the night um, and I put it back in this morning um, I thought I was like because this formation look like the sides of your head are free so you can just be a side sleeper and it'll be fine but um turns out i cannot sleep on my side i am a back sleeper only so um yes i'm gonna get so this one might not be anything because it's only been in for like four hours so i'll give it a go um but yes i'm halfway through the mermaid of black conch and i'm really enjoying it and i'm glad i'm enjoying it because i kind of had low expectations going in because i think i'd heard other people talking about it who hadn't really liked it that much. I mean, it was a cost of book of the year, but I thought it might be um, more like some of the more commercial end of stuff that um, in terms of the style of writing, I don't necessarily always love. Um, but while it definitely is more plotty than a lot of the books that I read and definitely more of a, a like story, um, I can really enjoy a story. <laughs> and I think that this is one of them. I think this bit might be really frizzy as well because it was just out free in the night. Um, so yeah it might not be the best uh, anyway so I um a bit so I'm really enjoying it it's um the capture of the mermaid was really like violent um but also based around fishing and um like was done in the same way as fishing for a marlin or a swordfish um and it was looking at the like fishing industry of the Caribbean it was done in a really interesting way and connecting those things with overfishing and colonialism and of ownership and I thought that that was done in a really interesting way also it's um told in a very it's very much about like storytelling and myths and fables and how those things um can be used to reflect ideas of uh, things like colonialism and stuff and I thought it was doing it's doing that in a really great way I am listening to it on audiobook because um I think that uh, what I could tell by reading the first chapter or two that it's written with a Caribbean rhythm like it's not quite written it's not written in patois um although they do talk about speaking black conch talk um which I'm assuming is like a pigeon or a patois um but it is not written like that like um a brief history of seven killings for example is I think potentially because one that's less accessible but also uh, two it is Black Conch isn't a real place, so it's not taking a specific Caribbean island that it's talking about, I don't think, um, as far as I can tell. And so, yeah, it's written in that way, and so I knew that having it read to me um, by someone more familiar with that rhythm in their mouth would be uh, better than, like, my head voice speaking it. So I'm listening to the audiobook, and I am enjoying it. Um, it's, it's quite, like, dark and slow-moving, but still there's a lot of plot at the same time if that makes sense like there's stuff happening and a lot of discussions going on and it's set in the 1970s there's a lot of talk of like Bob Marley and um <laughs> hmm, I'm not sure about this I look like a poodle talk of Bob Marley and of um like fights for independence and freedom and um a look at like masculinity and the present the expectations of and actions of men in the Caribbean in particular um a look at the culture of masculinity the like hangovers from colonialism but also the difference from uh, the white people who come for holidays mm. I'm not sure this has quite turned out the way that I wanted it to I mean it's it's got more movement in it than if I hadn't done it it is still Ah, oh, I thought I'd waited till my hair was not wet <laughs> it is still slightly damp um, anyway yes I'm really enjoying the mermaid of black conch um, and I am pleased that I am um, and I'm going to keep listening to the audiobook of that this was my first attempt um, I think that it did feel like I was using like huge sections but everyone seemed to only do it in huge sections into two sections um, and I don't like have loads of hair so I thought that that would be fine um, but um, yeah I'm not convinced by this I'm going to go and like find a brush and some hair serum and try and sort myself out hello we have come up to the end of the horny mermaid reading vlog uh reading vlogs where people have sex with mermaids uh, reading books where reading books where people have sex with mermaids reading vlog um i think the one that i have left to wrap up for you is the mermaid of blank conch which is the only one with an actual mermaid in it. <laughs> um, we've had two mermen and someone who thinks they're a mermaid uh, but this is the only one that actually contains a mermaid um as i said in the middle i was really enjoying this it has a lot 
of if you really like um, a book that's based on like storytelling and folk tales I think that that's a big theme in this book there is a lot of uh, references to myths um, from the Caribbean, myths that combine things like um, the indigenous people of the Caribbean, our main character Mermaid, comes from a thousand years ago and is an indigenous person to the Caribbean and then on top of that there are also myths um, that come from the Afro-Caribbean people, uh, myths of people being thrown overboard and becoming mer people um, and things like that are woven into it as well. There are looks, it is set in the 70s and there are looks at um, the kind of uh, American imperialism of that time but it, uh, and as well as going backwards for more imperialism and what it means to claim someone and ownership and very strong looks at gender um, and ideas of what is ex expected of different genders um, and the actions of different genders in Caribbean society. It is very black and white in terms of that um, and it does feel a little simplified um, from what I would prefer. I think that um, it is also like very like binary um, but I think the ideas are coming from characters from the 70s from a specific cultural context so I think it's you can see where it's coming from but it's very much over, over and over again emphasised this idea of becoming a real woman um, and uh, those things involving sex with men and menstruation um, and you know that that can get a little eye rolly um, it's not a very like original or very thought through look at gender it's very on the surface and I just found it to be a little reductive um, and as often happens with me with books like this I was enjoying it to begin with I thought the writing was good but as an uh, it got more and more plotty towards the end um, it it lost me a little bit there became a little convenience and a lot of like people popping up to have their final say um, in a way that felt a little contrived um, and yeah I ultimately thought it was fine it was it's an interest like a good read if what you want is a plotty rumpy book that does also focus on character um, and has a, a nice lyrical style of writing um, I think definitely listening to the audiobook lent strongly to that I think I said it's from a made-up island I think it's a made-up place but it is said to be part of the Lesser Antilles it is predictable and goes in directions you're expecting and it is not particularly deep in terms of the themes that it is exploring but it is very readable and a light easy book and if you are looking for like a beach read I think this would work. Overall I had I had a good time at this reading vlog. Um, all four of these books were readable and um, I felt compelled to keep going. Um, I got a little annoyed with the Melissa Broder towards the end but um, she's an accomplished writer as I said and none of them wound me up in the way that other books have been winding me up this year so um, I had a good experience regardless. I think this one was the easiest read and like I said very plotty and character driven. This one I appreciated even if I didn't quite enjoy it. Um, I think I could see mostly what it was trying to do um, but for me it never quite landed. Uh, the Pisces, I've given you a pretty strong I think review of this one so you know my thoughts. I think that it's just not my style. Uh, needed to either to be to go more into that kind of irreverent satirical like it needed to be more strongly humorous and less intensely earnest um, and also less surface level and obvious in terms of its mental health looking out which was what we got here with the C's. The C's its look at mental health felt a lot more nuanced and a lot more embedded. Um, it wasn't trying to be funny like the Pisces was so I think it had the space to do that um, more but overall, yeah, I thought this this might be one of my favourite books that I've read so far this year. So um, I'm glad to have read that in this vlog. And I hope you have enjoyed the video. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Did I miss any of your favourite mermaid books? Um, I, I did notice in this one and this one and this one, there were very much Disney Little Mermaid references <laughs> in all three of them. Um, the references to the Hans Christian Andersen and to um, other mermaid tales as well but definitely there were shout outs to Disney in these three. Quite amusing I haven't seen the new live action Disney Little Mermaid perhaps I should do that now that I've finished reading all of these. As I said let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I put out new videos twice a week I'll see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye!